Okay. The tea about this one. Well, that's how I feel about that one. And this one, a good bet. Welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to come on real quick and give a little bit of a review for the Hocus Pocus and the all new sequel. Now, part one. I loved part one because you're like basically reading the movie from the beginning to when we have Zachary Binks. Zachary Binks. I always want to say Zachary with a Z instead of with a T. Oops. But then we get up to part two when Allison and Max are all grown up and they have a daughter. Oh, I can't. Named Isabel. And I only. I didn't get far into it because I couldn't really get into it. I got up to page, I believe, maybe 211, somewhere around there, but not very far, and then I was on it for, since like October, and never got around to finishing it, so the other day I just decided, I keep staring at it, I, I'm not wanting to pick it back up to finish it because I really didn't care exactly what happens. Oops. But I do love the original and the beginning. It's just part two. I found it kind of slow, kind of lacking for me. So off to the other world you go, my friend. Goodbye. <laughs> Why we do this we may never know. Anyway, <clears throat> the next book I am, I think I'm gonna get rid of because I only liked three stories out of the twelve, and that is My True Love Gave to Me, The Twelve Holiday Stories, edited by Stephanie Perkins. <coughs> <clears throat> like I said, I only got three done out of the twelve, and the three that I only really cared about. And that would be the Rainbow Rowl Midnight short story. I will give a list of the ones that I like. Like I said, the one was Midnight. The other one, I liked the Angels in the Snow by Matt D.L. Penna. And Polars is Where You'll Find Me by Jenny Han. And that was about all I got up to because there's still the one with Holly Black and Kristen White and Lanny Taylor, but I like those authors, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, I'm done with it, if that ooh, makes sense. It's going bye bye as well, because like I said, if I only like the three stories and I don't care for rereading it again when it's Christmas time again for 2020, I don't see myself reading it and if I do I can find it on Libby so there's there's the tea on that so we getting rid of it it's going bye, 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 bye. anyway that's all I really wanted to come on here to talk about real quick give my short little wrap up on it so for later along the month that I won't have to because there's this video so love that for me anyway I will see you guys in my next one so hope you have a good day or night and as always get some unexpected reading in of course so alright bye guys Welcome to a long overdue 
January wrap up. I'm behind just a little, but hey, it's okay. Let's just hold on. Alright, some of the books that I'm going to talk about I have, a few I don't have, but I listened to them through my library, so there's that. So in the month of January, I ended up reading a total of 13 whomping books. I know, surprising. A few of them I actually DNF'd, and I actually forgot one, so hold on. Okay, so like I was saying, I read a total of 13 Whomping books, and two I listened to through my Libby account that I don't actually own the physical copy of, which I've already said that, but without further ado, let's finally jump into this January wrap-up because it is a super late and um oops a lot of stuff went down in january so i couldn't really film a, a whole lot but i did read a whole lot so there's that fun little detail and we're going to talk about the book the rest of the books that i read in january what I'm going to talk about here is Lucky in Love by Casey West. This is the first Casey West book I've read, and like I liked it, but the narrator in the audiobook to this, the way that she was talking to about the girl and the boy, it, she kind of made them sound like they were in middle school and not in high school. That was the only thing I disliked. But other than that, I really like the story of the message and like when you win big, kind of like tame your money and like really learn who you can trust to tell what you if, when you win the lottery because she ends up winning the lottery and she falls in love with a guy who works at the zoo and it's just, it's a, it's a cute romance, I'll give you that. It's definitely a cute, warm, fun fuzzy feeling and sometimes you need that in January you know you need a cute little love romance you eh eh okay we're gonna move on from lucky and love all right the next book I want to talk about I finally got through this thick beast one of the thick beasts I have <laughs> I have plenty more but that is a Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare, the third book to the Dark Artifice series. And this was jammed, packed with a lot of adventures. And then you have Will and Ty. Or no, not Will and Ty. Oh, I forget the kid's name. It's not Will. Wow. Has it really been that long? Oops. But it does have to deal with Ty and trying to figure out what to do with his twin sister Libby's death. Spoiler alert. I'm trying to find this kid's name because I know it's not Ty and it's going to drive me nuts until I find his name. Because at the end of the story, he ends up living with Tessa and Jim, and I'm like, yes! Like, I loved every single second of it. What's that kid's name? Is it Will? No, I'm having... <laughs> okay, I'm having this kid's name confused with the... Will from the Clockwork Angel series. But this kid is a Herondale. He is an Her a Herondale. You can give me that. Oh, what is your name? Why didn't I write it down? It's 
gonna take me forever to find it. Do 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 do. But anyway, like I said, through Kit, Kit and Ty. Okay, that's what it had me confused. I found this name. It's Kit. Wow. Anyway, between Kit and Ty, they try to find a way to deal with Livy's death, and Ty is like devastated, and he doesn't want to. He wants to continue on his life, but he doesn't want to continue on without his sister, and that's relatable. Like I can understand that, but oh, poor kid. Anyways, I had a good time with this series, and like Emma and Julian, like their relationship. Mm, like I like them, but I don't know if I like them together. That's it. Eh, I don't know, but the end of the book so I guess I will never know but that is just my thoughts and feelings with this and then apparently along Emma's and Julian's adventures they somehow get unerased from being a pair of a tie. I think I kind of know how it happened even though it wasn't explained exactly how it happened it was probably when they went into the other world where Livy was still alive and Ty was not. That's just my guess because in that world they do not have a pair of a tie. But when they came back, apparently their pair of a tie rune was gone. That's the only thing I can think of is why they're no longer a pair of a tie and why they can have a relationship now without one of them going dark. So there's that. I could be totally wrong, but I don't think I am. So we're going to put this book down because I'm yelling with it and I don't usually yell with books. I will with that series but I love it so don't get me wrong. Alright, the next book I'm going to talk about because it took me forever to get through and it's short but it's still long and that is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book uh, of Brandon Sanderson that I've read so far and I've really enjoyed it. It follows two different main characters, which is your Vin, and then it follows your other character, Kelsier. Kelsier is not the smart, wise person with his power that he has, but Vin, she's kind of a little smarter than he is, and then they, those two team up, and they try to take down someone big. It kind of reminds me of Six of Crows, in a way, where they get the gang together, to try to take down this big powerful man that they don't want ruling anymore. But overall, I really did enjoy Mistborn. I want to continue on with the other books in the series. I don't know when that will be, but I overall, I really enjoyed Mistborn and then like getting to hear Kelsier's past and then getting to know Vin and finding out more what she can do with her power by being with Kelsier because he's helping her learn before you know things went down before he had to disappear but overall I think I'm gonna enjoy hearing more about Vince and what she's gonna do for when she takes over if and when she does but that that's just this spill on that Alright, the next book I'm going to talk about is definitely a reread for me, and I'm listening to them on audio, or I'm going to try to listen to all of them on audio if I can, especially with the 4th and the 5th, and the, probably the 6th and the 7th because they're huge, but I am re-listening, well, we're listening to Harry Potter series, I finished Harry Potter and the Sorcerer in Stone, I'm not going to give it too much detail into it because it has been around forever. I'm just finally rereading the series. I don't know what gave me the urge to do it. I just, I just am. And, like, don't get me wrong. I do like the series, but, like, I'm not obsessed over Harry Potter like most people are. And that's, that's okay. But overall, like, I did like it. Like, for a middle grade book, 
this is what really, you know, gets me into magic, and I think that's where my magic system all started, was from the <laughs> Harry Potter. Thank you, Harry. It was nice to freshen up and, like, revisit you after so many years later, because we read this in middle school and that was way back when so makes me feel kind of old not that I am but <laughs> definitely it was a good reread you know what I mean like a good experience on the reread of the Harry Potter series and plus I never really finished book four but I read all of five but I don't think I continued on with six or seven and I finally get to, so I guess stay tuned for that. Alright. What we are gonna move on to is a Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This is the first book that I've read by Marissa Meyer, even though I have her other books like The Luna Chronicles and I have Heartless. Have I read them yet? No, I have not. But I did enjoy Renegades about the anti-heroes and the heroes. The anti-heroes do not like the heroes because they're supposed to come along when something bad happens and when they don't, um, Little Miss Nova turn kind of hatred against them. But little do they know, she has a power of her own and she is insomnia because she cannot sleep at night. She's more of a night owl and I kind of connect with her a, a little bit because I'm a night owl myself. That's all I want to say about that. But overall, I did really enjoy it. Look at my notes to figure out exactly what I enjoyed. Wrong side. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, between Nova and Adrian, I'm not sure who I liked more of telling the story because it goes back and forth between Adrian and Nova. I think I like more of Nova's side and I also liked Adrian's side for like how he's supposed to like look, be the role model and then they have this little kid who, like, can steal all of your powers away if you're in the room with him for too long. So you don't want to be in the room with him for that long. I cannot remember his name. Max. Sorry, I had a few in the book to remember what the little kid's name was, but I loved Max. Like, he was just oh, so funny and I just loved him. He was everything, even though I couldn't remember his name. Sorry, Max. But, anyway, it was really cute, and between Adrian and Nova, I kind of want there to be a relationship there. I don't know if it will be within the next two books that I'll find out, but, um, I enjoyed it. This is, like, one of the first superhero books I've ever read. And it was a fun, thrilling ride. Alright, the next one we're going to talk about is Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Amietti. Now, in the beginning, it kind of had me a little confused between, because it kept going back between the two different characters, which was... Because we're following a girl named Celie and then Amara. It, it, like I said, I kept going back and forth and like I was listening to it. And I was like, okay, so which one had the bad brother? Like I couldn't, like I didn't know if it was Celie that had the bad brother or if it was Amara. I think it was Amara that had the bad brother. And it was just like with the power and the element and like she remembers. Zeely remembers for like when the magic was gone that was ripped apart from the world and then Amara has this like magic scroll thing like if they touch it like they like feel the magic coming back and then there's this awful Keen 
who doesn't want anyone to find out that there's this magic scroll and so the, oh okay so then her brother comes and tries to find his sister because she ran away from the palace because she doesn't want the magic scroll destroyed she wants to bring the magic back to like how it used to be at least that's what I got from what I've listened to it's been a little while we're in the middle of February but it's been a while <laughs> and like I said it was just a little confusing to me at times between the two characters but overall I kind of enjoyed it but I do have book two so I don't know when I will get to book two but eventually but that's just my thoughts on children of blood and bone all right now we're gonna move on to a favorite because this is a reread for me and boy did I enjoy every minute of it there were some scenes like I forgot happened like I wasn't sure if it was in the first book or if it was in the second book it was in the first book for this one and that is Nightshade by Andrea Kramer we're following the main alpha girl who she's a werewolf she can transform into a wolf and then she is human during the day and they go to school like regular people and then like her pact is her pact and then there's the alpha male who leads a different kind of pact and they're kind of those two packs have to come to join together because she's supposed to get married to the alpha male but what you don't know is that Kala which is our main character in the story she does not want to be tied down to the alpha male and then she was seeing this boy up on the mountain she saved his life not knowing that she would see him again and um she sees him again the next day in class she's like that's the boy I saved who's not supposed to be here and then like they kind of formed a friendship that turned into something more later and he didn't really get their ways because of their wolves and she's telling him all the secret traits that she is not supposed to be telling this human but yet she does and it's just hey she can't help it because she's you know in love and then like ah! and then she has a little fight with her mom because she is fine with the way with the clothes that she has but her mom goes to get her new clothes because of her new mate that she's supposed to marry to that she doesn't end up getting married to she runs away on their wedding day to save this other human boy that she's fallen in love with like hmm, that's a lot of tea spilled in one take oh my bad that was a little fast but Oh, I just loved it. I really need to get into the second book again here very soon. <clears throat> but overall, I really love the Nightshade series and about the wolves and them connecting and just about the pack, about their friendship, just everything about it. I love it. As you can tell. Need a drink. Next book we're going to talk about is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I finally read this entire book. Well, I listened to it on audio as well. It was the audio month, so I wasn't not complaining. I really like Evie O'Neill. Like, the magic power that she has, that she had to keep a secret. Because when she went to a party and tried to tell people that she witnessed on someone's like their objects like she can see into their future or not their future but their past by holding an object and most people don't really like that especially if they're hiding something dirty and miss evie here can tell you exactly what that thing is and then that's when she gets thrown 
into New York City to go live with her uncle at this museum that doesn't get a whole lot of business. And that's where she meets this guy named Sam and this other guy named Jericho, I believe. Please tell me his name is Jericho. One, so that's right. Because it's following a lot of different perspectives in this, and I like that a lot. Want to know if that's his name? What's his name? What's his name? You give it to me. Please. Jericho, okay, so I was right. When you question yourself, yep, Jericho, okay. I kind of like the little friendship that devours between Jericho and Evie, even though Evie kind of likes him, but she also knows that her best friend in this also likes Jericho, so she holds back on showing her feelings for him, and I think that's kind of really sweet. It's like, you know your best friend likes him, but he likes you and not her. What do you do in that sticky situation, you know? And then we're also following another main character with superpower, kind of like a superpower ability, and that is Memphis. He has, or well, he used to have the power to heal people for like when they got sick or if they got hurt and he would touch you and he, he could heal you. But he lost that and most people his friends didn't understand that he lost that power ever since his mom died and tried to push it on him. It's like, yo, I can't do it anymore. Stop pushing. But they live with his aunt who's a little crazy. I liked her though. But it's just a lot happens in the Diviners. And they're also trying to find this serial killer who kills people and he's after certain pieces of their body so he can come back more alive as a ghost and it's up to Evie and her uncle and Jericho and Sam to try to figure out who this killer is and they're just on a fun mystery solving adventure and I loved every second of it you guys it's just if it sounds right up your alley please check out the definers I'm probably giving it a way different description than most people would, but, well, <laughs> like I said, overall, I really enjoyed Evie, Memphis, his little brother, <clears throat> I don't know what happened to my voice there, but his little brother, Jericho, Sam, Evie's uncle, Evie's friends, just every little thing about the diviners i loved it and it's a new series to me so I love it even more all right moving on the next book i'm going to talk a little bit about is the gentleman's guide to getting lucky by mckenzie lee that one is just a short story for Monty and Persky and Felicity, of course. This is like where it takes off after book one, where they go on this little vacation, and then Persky and Monty try to, well, they try to get together more on their vacation and like try to settle out where they are and like have romantic nights and don't want anybody else finding out just yet but Felicity, so. And it's a really short read, so I don't have the actual book yet, but I know it's out. So if that interests you, if you like The Gentleman's Guide, <clears throat> then you might like The Gentleman's Guide to Getting Lucky. <clears throat> and then the next book I'm going to talk about that I also don't have series <clears throat> to, but I've listened to them on audio and I really enjoyed them. And then... Please hold by I try to find a picture for you guys. And now this video is all over the place, but we're rolling with it. Read a lot of books in January. 
Come on. There we go. Whoops. Come on. The book I'm going to talk about next is Down Among the Sticks and Bones. And this one is following Jack and Jill's story about their world and their, uh, and their adventure. And it's to the Wayward series. And I've heard, you know, nothing but good things about this book. I really enjoyed it. I think I liked it. Jack more than I liked Jill because Jill seemed a little bit more um she couldn't really decide on the things that she wanted to do like she had to get like a certain approval and when she didn't get that approval it like she had to go out of her way to go and get it if that makes sense I can't get a better picture of it but so that is one of the books that I did read in January and yeah it's about the twin sisters of Jack and Jill who were 17 when they found their way home and they were packed off to Eleanor the West home for wayward children this is the story of what happened first when Jacqueline was her mother's perfect daughter polite and quiet always dressed as a princess if her mother was sometimes a little strict, it's because crafting the perfect daughter takes discipline. Jillian was her father's perfect daughter, adventurous, thrill-seeking, and quite a bit of a tomboy. He really would have preferred a son, but you work with what you got. They were five and they learned that grown-ups can't be trusted. They were twelve when they walked down and the impossible staircase and discovered that the presence of love can never be enough to prepare you for a life filled with magic and land filled with mad scientists and a death and a choices which the girls did go through like I said I like jacked more than No, it was Jillian that I liked more than Jack. I had them confused, but it was the one that I liked who went to go live with the scientist because she didn't want to live in a palace and she didn't want to be the princess. Okay, yeah, that's Jillian. My bad. Anyway, I really enjoyed book two. I need to continue on with the rest of the series and the final book is out. I don't own them, but eventually I'm gonna get there and on the whole series. I'm really excited and I keep losing my voice so sorry about that. <sighs> Nothing like vitamin C can't do. <clears throat> and then I have one more book I'm gonna talk about before my voice decides it's gonna give out or whatever it's doing right now. It's a little weird, and I'm going to talk about I Am Number 4 by Pectress Lore. There is a movie about this. Love the movie. Didn't know it was going to be a book until like years later. I have the whole series to it, and I absolutely loved reading the book. It was kind of like watching the movie, but the book definitely had more than, of course, what the movie actually has, and I think... I actually like the book better than I like the movie, but that may or may not change. I don't know. <clears throat> but basically, we walk past. It's basically about this kid named John Smith. He is from another planet. He is not from Earth. He definitely is an alien. Okay, so I don't know exactly where it shut off on, but I was in the middle of talking about I Am Number 4, 
Um, he goes to this new school and he meets this girl named Sarah. And then he falls in love with this girl named Sarah, and she has this Erkovich ex ex boyfriend. Wow, who is on the football team, and he tries to take a hit at John anytime he can because he's an idiot. And towards like the end of the book, he he likes John then. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. But John has to go through this training with his protector because they're running away from the bad guys that can't quite go home because it's being taken over by the bad aliens that can kill them all but he number four he is not alone and anytime one of his people one of the kids of the legacy dies he gets a little mark on the side of his leg and he is running they're running for their lives basically and then at the end of the book when the bad guys do find John and want to try to kill him one of the girls of the legacy has been looking for him and they she wants to help him and like once they team up together they're more these kids are more stronger and powerful or at least that's what his protector is saying that they are and I can't wait to continue on with the series because there's not any more movies sad but there are the books and I kind of want to know how it ends because in the movie it left me on a cliffhanger they go and try to find this kid named Sam that's also John's only friend that he finds and he and Sam Sorry, Sam thinks that his dad was taken by maybe one of these bad guys and he wants to go along with John to see if they can't find him and I'm hoping in the books they do because it leaves it off on a cliffhanger at the end in the movie of course. I'm comparing the two because I've watched it like years ago and I still have it but I remember like really liking it and the magic and the element and this little dog that finds John and sticks with him that's not actually a real dog it's like a little um it's like a little creature that can turn into like a lizard but it's actually an alien but it's set to protect John as well and John doesn't know it in the beginning but number six knows it and it's kind of hilarious but like I just loved this whole thing and science fiction which this definitely is I loved it the aliens the aliens getting along with the humans and they want to be human but they're not human because they have these special powers and each of these kids have different kind of powers like one can levitate one can use light one can like burn up and fire and be just fine so it's little elements like that that's like really cool and really different and unique about this world. And that's what I like about it. Obviously. But that is all I have to say for about I am number four. And hopefully that kind of kicks your interest in maybe reading it. If not reading it, maybe watching the movie. Because the movie's good too. Alright, and there you guys have it. That is the 13 books that I read in January. Sorry it took so long to upload, but hmm, stuff happened. Anyway, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe right down there and hit the notification bell because you don't want to miss further videos from when I will post. I try to do it frequently, but you know, it's life. But anyways, I hope you guys are having a good day or night wherever you are in the world. And of course, get some unexpected reading in because why not? And I will see you guys in a new video very, very soon. Okay. Okay, bye!